If we were to identify a single work that initiated the creation of the modern symphony orchestra, a likely choice would be Hector Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique. Written in 1830, just three years after the death of Beethoven, this symphony not only employs the instruments of the orchestra in unprecedented ways, it embodies a radically new concept of symphonic music. Born in 1803 and slated for a medical career by his parents, Berlioz received little formal musical training in his youth. Nonetheless, he developed a strong passion for music, and this enthusiasm, combined with his natural brilliance and a complete revulsion to the realities of anatomy classes at medical school, eventually landed him at the Paris Conservatory, where his efforts as a composer were variously lauded and met with total incomprehension. Whereas his lack of a musical background impeded his progress, it also freed him to think about music in ways that set him apart from his mentors and peers. This, as well as his natural sensibilities, made him much more susceptible to the developing currents of Romanticism, which rejected the rational spirit of the Enlightenment in favor of a perspective that viewed emotion as a more compelling portal to the pursuit of truth. In this respect, his first encounters with the music of Beethoven, not long before he wrote the Symphonie Fantastique, were decisive. Beethoven's use of classical means to express a romantic musical ideology utterly captivated Berlioz. His view of the orchestra was also informed and even determined by his love of literature and writing. In many respects, Romanticism was a literary movement, and one of its unique offshoots was the rise of composers who were also fluent writers. Musicians such as Schumann, Wagner, and Berlioz wrote thousands of pages, mostly on musical topics, displaying a volubility that would have been inconceivable to composers like Bach, Mozart, or Beethoven. And it was this literary orientation that made the Symphony Fantastique such a revolutionary departure in music. The proximate inspiration for the piece has often been described. In the fall of 1827, Berlioz developed a characteristically paralyzing crush on an Irish actress named Harriet Smithson, who was part of a traveling company that regularly performed Shakespeare's plays in Paris. Smithson's portrayals of Juliet and Ophelia ignited a passionate response within the emotionally volcanic Berlioz, who pursued her relentlessly over the next three years. It was all to no avail employing a leading lady's requisite facility in turning away stage door suitors, Smithson managed to steer clear of her increasingly unhinged admirer. Heartbroken by this rejection, Berlioz poured himself into the composition of what would become the Symphony Fantastique, an episode in the life of an artist in five parts. As the full title indicates, he approached his task more as a writer than as a composer, using music as a tool with which to construct a semi-biographical narrative about a sensitive young artist tormented by a romantic obsession. In doing so, Berlioz was creating something completely new, a symphonic novel. Up until this point, music in the standard abstract forms, such as concertos, chamber music works, and symphonies, sustained the interest of the listener purely as a result of how the musical elements, harmonies, rhythms, and melodies, were constructed and laid out. This so-called absolute music is characterized more by its musical content than by the means used to convey it. For instance, when Beethoven transcribed his second symphony so it could be performed by a piano trio, he was following a tradition of writing music that could sound well in a variety of mediums. In contrast, it's all but impossible to imagine a piece like the Symphony Fantastique in anything other than symphonic garb, as Berlioz relies on the incredible variety of timbres and effects the orchestra can produce to advance his narrative with the greatest possible vividness and clarity.
It's this perspective that drove the symphonic innovations in the piece, such as the use of an E-flat clarinet to embody hideous mockery, or having the violinists and violists strike their strings with the wood on their bows to evoke the sound of rattling bones, or employing church bells to signal the imminence of Judgment Day. By using the orchestra primarily as a tool for sonic description, Berlioz created an indispensable aesthetic framework for composers such as Wagner, Strauss, Mahler, Stravinsky, and many others, thus stimulating new developments in instrument making and a vast expansion of orchestral resources. His music provided the concept for the modern orchestra as we know it. Berlioz Symphony Fantastique is, without doubt, the greatest first symphony ever written, the product of a mind that was every bit as original as it was brilliant. His achievement was all the more remarkable in light of the fact that Romanticism in music developed significantly later than it did in literature and the visual arts. He was a true original, whose art and character were memorably captured by his contemporary, the poet Heinrich Heine. He is an immense nightingale, a lark as great as an eagle. His music causes me to dream of fabulous empires filled with fabulous sins. Thank you.